In this section of lecture on topographic analysis, we will focus on curvatures, derivation of parameters from splines and landforms. So what are curvatures? Curvature at a point is inverse of the radius of a circle that is tangent to the surface at this point in a given direction and its units are inverse meters. This will be a concave area, concave curvature, lower value and here the curvature will be higher and it will be convex. So one thing that we need to remember about curvatures that a general surface has different curvatures in different directions and there are several uh, curvatures with special properties. There are so-called principal directions and in this direction we have maximum and minimum curvatures. There are two special curvatures which are important in geomorphometry and one of them is profile curvature and that's the curvature which is measured in the direction of gradient and another one is tangential or plane curvature which is measured in the direction perpendicular to gradient and that means in direction of tangent to the contours so the plane curvature is essentially curvature of contours why are they important? Because the direction of gradient is direction of gravitational movement, of movement of the mass. So, as I said, profile curvature is, is measured in the direction of gradient. And as we said, the direction of gradient is direction of flow and it measures the rate of change in slope. What does it mean? That in convex areas, so where the profile curvature is convex, we have increasing slope, which results in flow acceleration. In concave areas, as we go down slope, we have decreasing slope, which causes flow deceleration. Now tangential curvature is measured perpendicular to gradient. And it measures the rate of change in aspect. Convex tangential curvature will cause flow divergence. Concave tangential curvature will cause flow convergence. And this is best shown on graphics. So here it is. Here we have uh, shapes that represent different combinations of profile curvature and tangential curvature. And as I said, profile curvature is measured in the direction of gradient, in the direction of flow, and tangential curvature is measured in the direction of tangent to the contour, in this direction. So, if we have a terrain shape where we have concave profile curvature and concave tangential curvature, we will have the accelerated flow, so flow slows down because the slope slows down, and at the same time the flow will be convergent. So we will get essentially a valley. We can also have a convex concave shape, so which is 
convex in the direction of gradient but concave in the direction of tangent to contour. What this means that we will have accelerated flow and convergent water flow. And this is, this is, for example, an area where we have very high potential of erosion and you would see these forms, for example, where gullies are initiated. So you have a sharp increase in flow, uh, flow velocity and at the same time also the flow depth because the flow, there is a convergent water flow. Here we have concave profile curvature and convex tangential curvature. That means we have, the water is slowing down and at the same time the flow is dispersal. And as it is dispersal or divergent, we have shallower water flow. So you can see, for example, this kind of uh, shape on alluvial cones. So you will see a lot of deposition, both due to the divergent flow and due to the acceleration of flow. But you can see on the uh, cones also convex, convex shape. So it is accelerated, but at the same time, the flow is dispersed. Uh, so it's shallower and it, it has less trans sediment transport capacity. So this is, these are some basic, uh, basic terrain shapes or terrain landforms based on convex, concave profile and tangential curvatures. So how do we compute them? Equations for curvatures can be derived uh, from general equation for curvature of a normal plane section through a point on a surface. And you don't need to uh, remember these equations, but what I would like you to remember is that the curvatures, because they represent change in slope and aspect change in gradient, they include, they are function of both the first order derivatives partial derivatives and second order partial derivatives. And here is the equation for profile curvature and here is the equation for tangential curvature. So we will need a function that has defined first and second order derivatives to compute the curvatures. So this is how, how the curvatures look like for real topography. Here they are derived from one meter resolution digital elevation model. And this is profile curvature. That means that it's measured in this direction. So you can see here we have a, a very subtle terraces. You can also see that on this forested area or on this ho home approximation or building approximation, the top is convex and the, the bottom is concave. The same, the valleys are concave. Here is tangential curvature. That means that it's measured in this direction. Okay, and here on the, on the ridge, it will be along the, this is how the contours essentially look like. So it will be convex on the ridges, concave, that's blue, in the valleys. So the blue is concave and the orange red is convex shape. Here are curvatures derived from 10 meter resolution digital elevation model. And in our area when the DEM is derived from LiDAR data, its structure is very rich, very complex. So when you see it uh, on a small image, it looks very, very noisy. But when you zoom in, you can see, for example, here again for the profile curvature, the ridges are convex, the valleys are concave. You can also see how the surface changes from convex to concave as the topography changes 
into the into the lake uh, lake surface here is tangential curvature again the ridges are convex and now this small valleys the tangential curvature picks up very nicely also these small valleys so how do we compute curvatures as we said we need first and second order partial derivatives we can again use the polynomial ap approximation or three on three times three neighborhood of each point again different types of polynomial approximations are used or we can use spline approximation so here is the example with the same polynomial that we have used for slope and aspect the computation is very similar uh, except for second order derivative we are essentially computing differences of differences so you compute difference between these elevations and then difference between those two differences to estimate your second order different uh, uh, your second order partial derivatives and then you combine the first and second order partial derivatives to compute the curvature based on the equations that i have shown already and again you can look at the source code for our slope aspect in grass to see how this computation of curvatures is actually implemented in GIS. Now, how, do we, how does uh, computation of topographic parameters from splines differs uh, from computation of uh, topographic parameters using polynomial approximation on uh, raster DEMs? First of all, it can be simultaneously, the topographic parameters can be simultaneously computed with interpolation based on the original points. So, for the computation of, uh, of these parameters, we can use tens or even hundreds of points instead of just nine points uh, in this three times three neighborhood or ten points within this uh, three times three neighborhood. And uh, we can use explicit equations for partial derivatives. With thin plate spline, we have only first order partial derivatives, so we can compute directly only slope and aspect. But with regularized spline and regularized spline with tension, we can do first and second order derivatives. That means we can compute both slope, aspect, and any type of curvature. And another interesting property of splines is that we can tune the level of detail uh, or the level of detail for the landforms or for the curvatures using tension. And we will show it on the examples. So here is one of uh, such example. If we are computing profile curvature from contours, we already shown this example that with very high tension, the spline will create these artificial waves along contours. So uh, for profile curvature, we will have convex shape along the contour and concave shape in between. And by tuning the tension, we can get rid of this artificial pattern and get a very nice representation of valley and the ridges. Here is another example how we can tune uh, in this uh, example tangential curvature uh, by tuning the tension, for example, with high tension. We are picking up very high resolution detail and in fact, this detail includes the pattern of scanning. So again, this is similar to contour pattern, but here we are picking up the, uh, the LIDAR profiles in this area. In this forested area, the pattern of the curvature is very different. Again, by lowering the tension, we can pick up larger features. So we get very nice representation of valleys 
and a nice representation of ridges. So here are the ridges, here are the valleys. So we have same data, we have same one meter resolution and very different results in curvatures because by tuning the tension we can pick up which level of detail of landforms we want to map. Here is another example, uh, another example from the dune, from the Jockey's Ridge area. Again, here we have profile curvature with high tension. We are picking up a lot of noise. This is a slope representation that looks a little bit better. You can also see that the curvatures are much more sensitive to noise because they include second order derivatives. But sometimes this high level of detail is useful. For example, here along this road, we are picking up actually either mailboxes or trash cans because these little teeny little features are actually along these driveways. If we lower the tension, we clean up this area and we pick up very nicely the dune crest and also the fences that are buried in the sand are nicely picked up as convex features. And, uh, but, but these little features disappear, they are treated as noise. So now let's look at landforms. We already talked that the, uh, that the profile and tangential curvature uh, picks up ridges and valleys. So, so we can define a ridge landform as a landform where tangential curvature and prof, uh, is convex and profile curvature can be convex or concave. And then we can define valley as a landform where tangential curvature is concave and again profile curvature can be convex or concave. Then for the peak, at exactly the, the peak point, the gradient will be zero and the shape will be convex convex. In pit, again, gradient will be zero right at the bottom of the pit and the shape will be concave concave. So we will get a hole. And saddle is an interesting shape. Again, gradient is zero but the shape is concave in one direction and convex in another direction. So here is an example of landform analysis based on curvatures and gradients. And again, it is important to note that the landforms can be extracted at different hierarchy levels. We can control the level of detail by size of neighborhood or tension when we use spline function as we have shown already. So here you have again the same resolution. It is the one meter resolution digital elevation model, but these forms have been computed using nine by nine uh, grid cell neighborhood. And these land forms were computed using 45 times 45 uh, grid cells neighborhood. And uh, you can see yellow are ridges, uh, blue are valleys, uh, and here are some saddle, saddle areas or passes. Here is an, another example how the topographic parameters are used for feature extraction and in this, ta this time also for change analysis. So here we have the Jockey's Ridge dune and you can see that the slip faces of this dune have a very distinct high uh, slope values so they can be extracted using the using these very high values of slope. Then the dune, cre dune crests 
can be extracted using very high values of um, profile curvature and the convex shape so along these orange lines and then using this uh, uh, profile curvature with certain threshold we can extract these crests at different times for example this is in this is the location of crest in 1974 this is in 1995 then 1998 and we can track the movement of the dune and measure the rate of this uh, rate of its migration and in the next section we will talk about analysis of uh, terrain time series.